All right, calculus curve sketching part two. Again, as we consider the intercepts, um, the y-intercept occurs when x is zero. So if you plug in zero, you're going to get zero for y. And then if you set the function equal to zero, um, if you cross multiply, notice that you would get 2x squared is equal to zero. And that would be at x equals zero. So another situation where it goes through the origin. Notice the denominator, the domain does not include negative 1 or positive 1. So x is equal to negative 1 and positive 1 will give you 0 in the denominator. So therefore, I'm going to have vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. As you go ahead and uh, let this limit go to infinity, the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x squared over x squared minus 1. Notice as we factor the x squared out of the top and x squared out of the bottom, what happens is your x squareds do cancel and the 1 over x squared goes away. You get 2. Whether it's positive or negative infinity, you're going to get 2. So a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 2 is in order in this scenario. I've already got some really good indications about what this graph looks like by this uh, data below. But in order to determine the rest, I need to consider the first derivative and the second derivative. F prime of x, I will use the quotient rule. Derivative of the top is 4x times the x squared minus 1 minus the derivative of the bottom times the top left alone all divided by the bottom squared. Notice I get 4x cubed and I get 4x cubed. So as those cancel, I'll end up with just 4x over x squared minus 1 quantity squared. Now what's important about this is that because we're squaring the bottom, we know that the bottom is always positive. So because the bottom is always positive, um, we just need to really consider the top. Um, we will mark negative 1 and positive 1 and 0, but just notice that the bottom will always stay positive. So if you plug in a negative 2, notice it will be negative on the top and positive on the bottom. Plug in a negative 0.5, it will be negative on the top positive on the bottom. Plugging in positives, it will be positives in both situations. So even though nothing changes at negative 1, positive 1, we still want to consider those because that's where the function is undefined. So the function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1, union, negative 1 to 0. And then it's increasing from 0 to 1, union, 1 to infinity. It does change sign at zero. It changes from negative to positive. Therefore, that is going to be a local minimum. So at a coordinate of zero, when you plug zero into the original function, you do get zero. No local max. It does not change from positive to negative. Let's find the next derivative. F double prime, we take the derivative of the top and we get 4 times x squared minus 1 quantity squared minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. If you take the derivative of the bottom, what you need to do is set up the chain rule. u squared, x squared minus 1. Derivative is 2x and 2u, so I get 4x times x squared minus 1. So 4x times x squared minus 1, all over x squared minus 1 raised to the fourth power. Notice how they all have an x squared minus 1. So we will take one of them out. You have 4x squared up top, minus 4, minus 16x squared over x squared minus 1 cubed. 
That would be negative 12x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 1 cubed. So we need to consider critical points. If you notice, the top is never equal to 0. How do I know the top is never equal to 0? It's a parabola that's upside down that's shifted down four units. That never crosses zero. The top is always negative, always negative. So I look at the bottom, and the bottom is equal to zero, negative one and positive one. So it'll always be a negative on top. If you were to plug in, say, negative two, negative two squared is four, four minus one is three, Cubed is 27, so you get a negative over a positive, that will be negative. Plug in a value between negative 1 and 1, we'll try 0. 0 squared is 0, minus 1 is negative 1, cubed is negative, negative divided by negative is a positive. If you plug in a value like 2, you get a negative again, because you'll get a positive on the bottom and a negative on the top. That's the second derivative. That tells us in that situation that it's concave down from negative infinity to negative 1, union 1 to infinity. It's concave up from negative 1 to 1. You might want to write inflection, but in fact, negative 1 and 1 do not count as points of inflection because they are not part of the original domain. So we do not count them for points of inflection. I now have all of my information. I'm going to do my best to graph this. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Very good. Horizontal asymptote of 2. Vertical asymptote of negative 1 and positive 1. We have an x and y intercept of 0. And we know that between 1 and negative 1, the graph is concave up. We know the graph is concave down on the other sides. So therefore, the graph must look like this. Now, as you look at that, you know that it is incorrect. And the reason why I know it's incorrect is because I totally messed up this part down here, I bet. I know it's incorrect because as you look, I show myself crossing the x-axis, and I know it doesn't cross the x-axis there. There's something wrong. It looks like it's with my concavity. Let me check it out, and we'll see what happened. Found it. Sloppy mistake. Some of you guys probably caught it a little bit earlier. It took me about 10 seconds. Notice when I distribute this 4x to negative 1 becomes a negative 4x. So that was really bad on my part. That means that these values all change. This should be positive and positive. That should be negative and negative. Notice how I found out. I was checking my graph against all my other stuff. So that's how I know I made a mistake. I've got a way to check my answers. So the increasing and decreasing should be switching spots. It's going to change the concavity as well. Let's go through and do that. So we have in this uh, situation, we're going to have concave or increasing from negative infinity to negative 1, union um, negative 1 to 0. Decreasing from 0 to 1, union 1 to infinity. That's what's going to happen. Let's check the uh, concavity. So it's not going to have a local min. We switch from positive to negative. Looks like it would then have a local max. So the local max is going to happen at 0, 0. No local min. 
So let's try that second derivative again, clean this guy up. Again, I found my mistake because I checked it against all my other work. I knew something was wrong. So uh, remember that this chart here, we had zero, we had negative one, and we had one. Uh, we were in this situation, we were, um, what were we? We got uh, positive and positive, and then negative and negative, okay? So F double prime, derivative of the top, negative four times x squared minus 1 quantity squared plus 4x because you minus the negative 4x times the derivative we already calculated that to be 4x times x minus 1 all over x squared minus 1 quantity to the fourth notice how they all have an x squared minus or x squared minus 1 so we're going to get rid of those x squared minus 1s reduce that to 3 and at the top there, now I have a negative 4x squared. I have a plus 4. And then I have a plus 16x squared. And I get 12x squared plus 4. All over x squared minus 1 quantity cubed. Notice how the top is not always negative. The top is always positive. I'll now check negative 1 and positive 1. As I check a value of negative 2, you can see how I get 4 minus 1 is 3. Cube is 27. That will be positive. Plug in 0, it will be negative. And plug in 2, it will be positive. Sorry about that. So that tells me I have concave up from negative infinity to negative 1. Union with 1 to infinity. And I'm concave down from negative 1 to 1. So my graph here, I'll draw in green. This will be the correct graph. Looks like I have a local max there. It looks like I am increasing and concave up during this time. And I am decreasing. and still concave up during that time. Notice the concave down is the middle part, and the concave up are the other two parts. So the green should be my graph. Let's type it in and see what we get. Y equals, I've got 2x squared divided by parentheses x squared minus 1. My window, I'm going to make it a 8 by 8. I think that, that would be accurate for my drawing. My graph. And I'm looking at the green. My calculator does a poor job, poor job of drawing the asymptotes, but um, pretty good. I discovered that behavior. Nice work. All right. So you saw me make a mistake. We all make them. And uh, it's, it's just great if you can have something to verify your answers. When I saw myself crossing the x-axis, uh, this spot and that spot, I knew I had a problem because my x-intercepts, it was just zero. So I knew that that was a big problem. So figure it out. See you soon.